Hello, everybody. Welcome to the introduction to SIG Cluster Lifecycle. My name is Justin Santa Barbara. I am one of the SIG Cluster Lifecycle co-leads. I'm also a software engineer at Google. My GitHub handle is JustinSB. Lubomir and myself are going to be giving this presentation together, but we are representing the work of a great many people within the SIG. Hello, my name is Lubomir Ivanov. I'm a SIG Cluster Lifecycle co-lead, software engineer at VMware's Open Source Program Office and my GitHub handle is neolit123. So here is what we are going to talk about today. We are going to explain what is SQL's life cycle, what is the mission and philosophy of the special interest group. Also, we are going to cover the stack of sub-projects that we maintain. In particular, we are going to highlight three of them. These are Quester API, Component Config, and Image Builder. And finally, we are going to show you how you can get involved into contributing to the special interest group. What is SQL's life cycle? In Kubernetes, we have special interest groups, also known as six, and SQL's life cycle is one of those. All the six also have charter documents, and a charter document is something that defines what are the goals and non goals of a particular group. SQL's life cycle's objective is to simplify the creation, configuration, upgrade, downgrade, and teardown of Kubernetes clusters and their components. As a special interest group, you also have a vision to develop the tooling necessary to build a highly automated meta-cloud. A meta-cloud here means, imagine something that is a Kubernetes cluster that can be deployed on any cloud provider. We want to avoid the pitfalls of the past because we had some unsuccessful experiments in the past. Everything should be declarative, API-driven, a CADE-like deployment type of style, and managing these clusters should be as easy as managing the Kubernetes objects like pods. And that is a familiar pattern to everyone. We want to make the 80% use case simple and the 20% use case possible. Always consider a simple configuration available to everyone, but there has to be this advanced configuration that is still possible. To the rest of the users. We also want to commoditize or standardize Kate's cluster deployments. So if somebody is looking at your cluster, uh, eventually they're going to know that, okay, this is following a standardized way, a standardized pattern for cluster deployment. So on this slide, we have a diagram of the current stack of tools that we are working on. At the bottom we have HCDADM. HCDADM is potentially a manager of HCD clusters, uh, a CLI and a library that is work in progress, potentially consumable by high-level tools. On top we have KubeADM. KubeADM is a cluster bootstrapper, as uh, a lot of people should know already. And Cluster Addons is a project where we are working on standardizing the way addons are deployed in a cluster and their Manage as a life cycle, like how do you upgrade them, how do you downgrade them. Cluster API, a lot of people should be familiar with Cluster API as well. This is a project where you can create clusters using a declarative model. It's very similar to the, to the Kubernetes declarative patterns. So if you combine these, tool, uh, these tools, you can potentially produce artifacts that you can then feed to an image builder, and the image builder can create a uh, like a virtual machine image for you, and the virtual machine image can then be fed to the cluster provisioner, which is a layer on top. The cluster provisioner can create you a cluster that uses this virtual machine image. And finally, on the left, we have component config. Component config's idea is that we can configure all these components on the right side with a declarative API that is very similar to the Kubernetes API, and in fact it uses the same machinery. As a group, uh, we are also trying to follow a particular philosophy, and that is arguably the Unix philosophy. We want to make each program do one thing and do it very well. The boundaries between the separate projects should be clear, and there should not be, ideally, that much overlap. Every computing infrastructure project that initially meets one need, well, 
we will eventually expand in scope to only meet several needs poorly. Uh, this is something that we have to avoid. We also expect the output of every program to become the input of another program. And combining all the tools that we have, we want to create this uh, Voltron-like software. On this slide you can see a pseudo Voltron example. It's a immutable node update type of scenario. So on the left side we have a CI that triggers a, a rebuild of artifacts, notifies an operator to update cluster manifests that are potentially consumed by the cluster API. The cluster API can then perform a rolling update, then a bootstrap provider, which in this case is kubeadm, to trigger the new nodes to join the cluster. During KubeCon AU 2020, we created a survey to let our users get back to us with some feedback. The main takeaways are, users are still struggling to keep up with the release cadence of Kubernetes. Currently there is a proposal to shift to a 3 releases per year process instead of 4. This seems to be a very favorable option by a lot of users. The upgrade process can be difficult due to core API changes and deprecations and removals. Basically, we saw a number of comments about this as direct responses in the survey itself. Ubuntu as an operating system for VMs, Docker as a container runtime using Docker Shim in this case, and Calico as a CNI appear to still be the most used projects in their respective areas. We also saw that projects like Cluster API and KubeADM are gaining more traction and are getting positive feedback from the users, but there is still desire to improve the overall UX of these projects. In this section we would like to highlight some projects that we are currently working on. Okay, I'm going to highlight another one of our projects, the Cluster API. Cluster API is building a declarative Kubernetes-style API for creation and management of clusters. It also manages some of the infrastructure that is cluster-scoped, things like networks or IAM policy from your cloud provider. It's focused around a declarative specification of the machines that become the nodes of the cluster. Uh, some important things to understand. This is different from the Kubernetes cloud provider, which provides workload cloud resources like volumes and load balancers. This is provisioning similar infrastructure, but for the cluster itself. And one of the important design decisions was that the specification of a machine is immutable. But it's interesting in that cluster API still provides the ability to upgrade the cluster. You may be asking yourself, how is this possible? How can the machine be immutable, yet the cluster can be upgraded and therefore be mutable? And the answer is that we follow a similar pattern as Kubernetes does. We don't just want to use Kubernetes CRDs. We want to follow the Kubernetes API design patterns. Uh, and in Kubernetes, there is indeed a similar design pattern. Uh, pods are immutable, but pods are wrapped by replica sets, which runs a number of them. A replica set remains immutable, but a deployment creates mutability over those replica sets. Uh, it is able to create a new replica set and scales down the old one and scales up the new one. So we use exactly the same pattern in cluster API. A machine, like a pod, is immutable. A machine has a number of replicas in a machine set, like a replica set, and a machine set is still immutable but a machine deployment can create a new machine set, scale down the old machine set, and scale up the new one. A machine deployment is just like a deployment. And that's how we can achieve mutability at the machine deployment level. The machine is the same CRD, whether this is on AWS or GCP or VMware. And there's an analogy here to storage classes in Kubernetes. There is similarly a machine class. A uh, machine class is a Kubernetes object that describes attributes of the machine that are specific to that cloud provider, just as a storage class describes attributes that are specific to a particular storage backend. Cluster API is a newer API, and we've actually developed our thinking around this design pattern over time. Machine class objects are actually typed objects. Uh, it has a different kind on AWS than on GCP. 
AWS is an AWS machine template. GCE is a GCE machine template. This allows for the fields of a machine class object to, the, to be specific to the cloud or infrastructure provider. And that allows us to get richer type checking and validation than we do in the storage class, where a storage class has the same kind across all the storage backends. So not only reuse, but also evolution of the Kubernetes design patterns. So let's talk a little bit about the cluster API roadmap. Cluster API is still in alpha, so how does it get to beta? Generally, the main goal is to get it into widespread real-world use and continue to get feedback on whether our expectations match how this thing is used in production. Uh, more automation also helps with this goal, both automation of testing and of the project processes. But the next couple of alphas are going to focus on some of those blockers, robustness of the control plane. A few features like auto scaling and spot instances, some improvements to the primary user facing tool called cluster CTL. And in the alpha after that, resiliency of the nodes, extensibility of load balancing, using the latest features from some of the other SIG sub projects. In order to get to beta, the really big thing we need is better documentation, which goes hand in hand with more feedback from real world users like you. Also, getting it integrated into some of those higher level tools. So for example, COPS is planning to support cluster API initially for the nodes. And getting the existing Kubernetes E2E -E tests using cluster API on GCP and on AWS. To learn more about the cluster API, you can join a deep dive session we have about it here at KubeCon NA 2020. It's going to be presented by Kati Gibanji and Carlos Panato on Friday, November the 20th. Another project that we wish to highlight is Component Config. Component Config is a Kubernetes style API for configuring components. And Component Config is trying to solve some problems. The first one is that the core Kubernetes components are not consistent in how they are configured. They use a lot of flags, and oftentimes the flags across different components that do exactly the same thing have different names. The solution for that is that the core components should implement component config, and in fact most of the core components have already started doing that. Another problem is that it's pretty hard to write a case-like component with declarative config. So adding a corporate config itself is not that easy. So the solution for that is that we should factor common logic for component related code in the repository designated for that. That is component base. And it's a toolkit. It's going to make it easier to write a new component that immediately implements a corporate config that uses a Kate's API style of configuration. And existing components should be retrofitted to use the same toolkit. Component config gives us a lot of benefits. It has maintainability, so when a component has a flag set that grows over 50 flags, configuration becomes painful. Upgradability, so for upgrades, version configuration is arguably easier to manage than flags, since flags are unversioned. Programmability, configuration expressed as JSON and YAML objects, allows for consistent manipulation, templating, patching, and introspection. And also possibility. Many types of config simply cannot be expressed as key value pairs. And finally, it's also declarative. Open API information can be exposed using component config and used for generating documentation for your config. To learn more about component config, you can watch this talk that uh, Lucas Kallstrom gave at a previous KubeCon. And in this talk, you can actually see some of the details, implementation details, around how we are actually implementing component config in existing components, or how do we want uh, future components to implement it. In Kubernetes, we have a working group that is called Component Standards. It's uh, a combined effort between SQL Lifecycle and SIG API Machinery, trying to tackle some of these problems around component config. To get engaged or find more about it, you can follow these links.
Another project that we wish to highlight is Image Builder. Image Builder is essentially a tool for building virtual machine images, not to be confused with container images. It includes Ansible and Packer scripts, which are well supported by VMware, Microsoft and other companies for creating Cluster API machine images. The current list of supported operating systems include Ubuntu, CentOS, Real 7, Photon, Amazon, Linux and Flatcar support is coming soon. Image Builder is targeting VMware, AWS, Azure, QMU and DigitalOcean as providers of infrastructure. The project has also started working on a conformant test suite which uses GOSS which is a YAML based server spec alternative tool for validating server's configuration. The repository of the project also includes some other tools such as kubedeploy which is still used by COPS for creating images for AWS, configADM which is a tool for generating cloud init and bash for configuration of virtual machine images. Here are some of the goals of the Image Builder project. Provide a consistent tooling for all approaches for building images so that we can create more standardized, reusable and testable images. Make it easier for downstream consumers to customize their own images and keep their customizations up to date. Testing of images to verify conformance using tools like InSpec and GOSS. Release of images for different cloud operating system combinations with regular updates. Image Builder is a fairly new project so we have a big roadmap for it. The CLI is still alpha so one of the goals is to get it to beta. PR testing for builds on AWS, GCP and QMO are planned. Azure is already running on PR submits. Flatcar support and Windows support are also on the roadmap. Conformant testing and testing suites. Stress testing for log rotation and immutability. Submissions to the Kubernetes test grid which is the tool we use to monitor end-to-end -end tests. And finally image publishing, signing and release which is similar to a way the official Kubernetes containers are promoted today. To learn more about Image Builder, you can see our deep dive session here at KubeCon NA 2020. It's going to be on Thursday, November 19th, presented by Mosh Imerman and Tushar Agarwal. I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can get involved. Most of the projects we've described are not yet in GA. KubeADM is, some of the high-level provisioning, cluster provisioning tools are, but otherwise the projects are in beta, in alpha, or even pre-alpha. So we need your help. And I'd suggest this is also an opportunity. Sometimes as a Kubernetes contributor, it can feel like everything that can be done has either already been done or there are 10 existing issues stating why you can't do it. Uh, that is very much not the case in SIG cluster lifecycle. There is a lot of work still to do. That work is very concrete, and we are very oriented around encouraging contributors. Specifically, we have some onboarding documentation, which is a great place to start, along with our community page. Many of the subprojects are excellent at triaging issues. They label issues with good first issue or help wanted to try to steer you to issues that don't require the in-depth knowledge that you'll likely gain over time. A great way to get involved is with documentation or even just trying out different things and reporting any issues you encounter. There are a number of Zoom meetings. There's an overall SIG cluster lifecycle week meeting biweekly, and many of the subprojects have their own biweekly meetings as well. So please attend, ask questions, introduce yourself, introduce yourself on Slack. There's a very active Slack channel where you can find people at all hours of the day and night. If you're not yet a Kubernetes contributor, I encourage you to attend the new contributor sessions that are run by SIG Contributor Experience. In general, the Kubernetes community philosophy is that you earn your place at the table by chopping wood and carrying water, by taking on the tasks that need to be done. So Everyone is expected to get involved, and the flip side of that is that you are therefore welcome and encouraged to get involved. We have reached the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for your time, and now we can have a Q&A session.